All right, guys, to start off your worksheet, I would like for you to have already filled in the slopes on the table below. If you have not done that, I want you to just stop the video right now, use your book if you need to, use your notes from today, and just review for yourself what the slope of each of these kinds of lines are. And now I'm going to tell you, just to remind you, so any slope with a positive slope is going to point toward the positive side of the number line. So any sort of line that goes from the bottom left up to the top right would be a positive slope. A negative slope is the opposite of that. So it's going to start on the bottom right and go to the left. Remember, if I have a number line, negative numbers are here on the left, so it's pointing to the left. Zero slope. We don't want the floor to have a slope. So zero slope is a horizontal line. And an undefined slope would be like the wall. You can't climb the wall. So undefined goes up and down. And then just go ahead and write a description of that. So for example, you might write uh, points to the positive side of the number line. Okay, and you should be able to fill in each of those. So an example of a positive slope, remember we use the variable m to represent slope, so m is equal to 2. Um, a negative slope, m is equal to, we could say negative 2. A zero slope, that one's pretty obvious. The example would be it equals 0. An undefined slope, this one is a little bit different. What you would write for this is <clears throat> the m is no solution, true. And what it means is that there is no x in the equation. And we will explore everything that that means um, as we get further into it. So there is no x in the equation. There we go. Okay, now after we identify if a slope is positive or negative, slope actually has a value. And when you talk about it in the mathematical sense, slope is the change in y, which we represent with a, this little triangle. It's called a delta. So the change in y over the change in x. So that's how you figure out slope. Now there is a formula, and the formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and that equals the slope, and we use the variable m to represent slope, it has two hills. Okay, now, you're welcome to use the formula, and um, at the end I will show you an example using only the formula, but what I found is a lot of students have a hard time remembering the formula and then actually plugging it in correctly. So I use a method called stack and subtract. And what the stack and subtract method does is you take your two, your two points and you put them on top of each other. So you stack the two points on top of each other and then you subtract each number. Now remember when we subtract, what that means is we're going to change the signs. So I wrote a subtraction sign over here, you can see it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to a negative 4 and then a positive 3. And now I'm going to subtract them or combine the two numbers, and we make this double L. So when I combine negative 1 and negative 4, I get negative 5. And when I combine 2 and 3, I get positive 5. And our double L's right here, see how these are two L's? They never cross each other. So you always make sure you have a double L, and, negative, and 5 over negative 5 means that the slope is negative 1. So for this problem, we would say that m, the slope, equals negative 1. Okay, now let's try another one. I sort of started filling it in for you. Notice the first point is missing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put 2, 1 up on the top. And then since I'm subtracting, I'm going to change the signs. So this becomes a negative 3 and a negative 2. When I combine positive 2 and negative 1, I get negative 1. And when I combine 1 and negative 2, I get negative 1. And negative 1 over negative 1 is 1. So the slope is 1. Okay, now we're going to try one pretty much independent of all the other stuff. So I'm going to write 
basically all you have to do is take the second one and put it underneath the first one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put 5, negative 3 right underneath. And then since I'm subtracting, I'm going to change the signs. So my 5 becomes negative and my 3 becomes positive. When I combine 2 and negative 5, I get negative 3. And when I combine negative 1 and 3, I get 2. So the slope is negative 2 over 3, or negative 2 thirds. Okay, go ahead and try the next one, and I'm going to go ahead and do it, but I want you to pause the video and try it by yourself first. Okay, for the next one, you'll see when I subtract, I got a 0 up on the top, and 0 divided by anything is 0, and that's fine. You can have a slope of equal to 0, so that's what we got. If there's some part of that that you don't understand or you have a question about, that might be something to write down on your paper to ask me tomorrow. Just a couple more examples and then I will let you finish out the page by yourself. So when I bring over the 2 and the 4, so I'm going to stack them underneath, 2 and 4, and then I'm going to change the signs because we're technically subtracting, so I'm going to write negative 2 and negative 4, and then I'm going to combine. So I have same signs, negative 3 and negative 2 gives me negative 5. 6 and negative 4 is 2. So the slope is 2 fifths and it's a negative slope. Now just to remind ourselves which way does a negative slope point? We know already when we go about graphing this line, because that's what we're going to be doing soon, that it will be pointing to the left. Okay, let's look at question number 4. So I'm going to bring the negative 5 and the negative 1 underneath. And then since I'm subtracting, that means I have to change my signs, so this will become a positive 5 and a positive 1. When I combine a negative 5 and a positive 5, I get 0. And when I combine 4 and 1, I get 5. So now I have 5 divided by 0. Let's remember, if I have 5 candy bars and I split them between 0 people, how many do we all get? Well, it really doesn't make sense because there's nobody to give the candy bars to. So this is where we'll have m, or the slope, is undefined, or we, sometimes we say no solution. So undefined slope. And what does that look like? Remember, it's straight up and down. So a vertical line is undefined. Okay, last two. I'm going to bring the 8 and the 3, and then I'm going to change my signs because I'm subtracting. And when I combine negative 2 and negative 8, I get negative 10. And when I combine 3 and negative 3, I get 0. Again, that is okay to have a 0 on top. And my slope equals 0. And just to remind ourselves, a slope of 0 is a horizontal line. Remember, we don't want the floor to be sloped. All right, last one that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to let you finish these out by yourself. So I'm going to bring over the negative 1 and the 3. Since I'm subtracting, I'm going to change the signs, so this becomes a positive 1 and a negative 3. 2 plus 1 is 3, and 6 and negative 3 gives me 3. 3 over 3 is the same as 1, so my slope is 1, and that's a positive line, so I know that it's going to point toward the positive side of the number line. So here we've given ourselves just a quick reminder of what all the different kinds of slopes look like. Go ahead and finish the worksheet, and then at the bottom, write one question that you'd like to ask, um, and or two if there's something uh, secondary that you want to know before we embark on our practice tomorrow in class.